Hello, this is Math Jazz from Almost Cool. This is the first video in our series of videos on limits. Our topic today is sequences. A sequence is a function whose domain is the natural numbers. It's usually notated a sub n with parentheses around it. The elements of sequence are usually notated as a sub n with no parentheses around it. The way that we want to think about this is that if a sequence is like an infinitely long shopping list, then with parentheses, the, the symbols are talking about the list itself, and with no parentheses, it's talking about a particular item on the list. So, for example, with parentheses, a sub n means the list, or um, the list itself, the object, and without the parentheses, a sub n refers to the nth item on the list. So, like, if I plugged in 4 for n, I would be talking about a sub 4, which is the fourth item on the list. A real sequence is a sequence whose codomain is the set of real numbers, and the way that we'll think about that is that the... A, a real sequence or a sequence of real numbers is like an infinitely long shopping list of real numbers. Here are some examples. So I have on the left of the arrow a sub n equals n. This is an equation describing the nth item on the list. So if I wanted to find the fourth item of the list, I plug in 4, I get a sub 4 is equal to 4. So this equation computes items on the list. It computes particular elements of the sequence. On the right-hand side, I have the sequence written out 1, 2, 3, and so on. And I say that the list item, that is the, the sequence written parentheses a sub n, is equal to this list. So the equation gives rise to this particular sequence, or we can think of this particular sequence has an equation that describes which number goes where on the list. This is interesting because not all sequences have nice equations that represent them, but certainly the sequences that have equations that represent them are a lot easier to work with. Here's another example of a sequence b sub n equals 1 over n, that is an equation describing the nth element in the sequence. On the right hand side I have the sequence b n equals 1, 1 half, 1 third, and so on. Number 3 is a very famous sequence. This is a, this is a recursively defined sequence, that is the equation for the nth term is given as a function of terms that came before it. So, in this case, c sub n equals c sub n minus 2 plus c sub n minus 1. With a recursive definition, we have to give at least uh, the first element explicitly, if not the first few elements explicitly. Here we have c1 is explicitly defined as 1, c2 is also explicitly defined, and it is also 1. This, uh, this sequence, the Fibonacci sequence, goes 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. And so the set of equations on the left-hand side of the arrow describe the sequence that is on the right-hand side of the arrow, namely the Fibonacci sequence, which goes 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, and so on. So now we're going to define several properties that functions may or may not have. The first of which is decreasing. That is, a function can be a decreasing sequence if a sub n is greater than a sub n plus 1 for all natural numbers n. It's strictly decreasing if a sub n is less or so is greater than a sub n plus 1 for all n in the natural numbers. Likewise, a sequence can be increasing if for all n in the natural numbers 
a sub n is less than or equal to a sub n plus 1, and strictly increasing if we make it a strict inequality. If a function is either increasing or decreasing, it is monotonic. And it, if, it, if it is strictly increasing or strictly decreasing, it is strictly monotonic. Uh, another property is, is boundedness. A sequence can be bounded, uh, a sequence is bounded above by some number b. If that number b is bigger than every element in the sequence. Likewise, a sub n could be bounded below by a number b if b is less than or equal to every number in the sequence. If a sequence is both bounded above and below, it's called a bounded sequence. So here are some examples of sequences, and we're going to discuss which of the properties we've described the sequence has and which it does not have. So here's sequence a n again. It's uh, the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. This is uh, a strictly increasing sequence. That is, we do not have any elements that are equal to the element before. They are, they are all strictly greater than the element before them. This sequence is bounded below, but it's not bounded above. For example, 1 is less than or equal to every element in the sequence, but there is no number that is greater than every element in the sequence. The sequence bn is a strictly decreasing bounded sequence. That is, every element is strictly less than the element that came before it, and one is bigger than every element in the sequence, or equal to every element in the sequence, and zero is less than or equal to every element in the sequence. So we have both bounded above and bounded below. The Fibonacci sequence is bounded below, and it's an increasing sequence, but it's not strictly increasing because the first two elements are the same. Therefore, we can't have a strictly increasing function because we don't have a strict inequality for every consecutive pair of numbers. But we do know that 1 is less than or equal to every element in the sequence, so this is bounded below. There is no number that is greater than every number in the Fibonacci sequence, so it is not bounded above. And here's a fourth sequence. This is not monotonic and not bounded above or below. The sequence 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 3, and so on. Another property that sequences may or may not have is convergence. A sequence a n converges to a number a if for every epsilon greater than zero there exists a number capital N such that if little n is greater than capital N then the absolute value of a minus a n is less than epsilon. A sequence that does not converge to a number is said to be divergent. Equivalently, a sequence a n converges to a number a if for every epsilon greater than zero there are only finitely many a n's that are further away from a than a distance epsilon. So we're going to go through our sequences again and figure out which of these sequences converge or diverge. So starting with the first sequence, a sub n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. This sequence is divergent since for any number a there are most two a n's that are less than a distance of one away from a. Which means that the rest of the a n's are further away than one and there are infinitely many of these a n's so the sequence diverges. Using the, sef the second definition of, of convergent from a, a slide ago. bn is a sequence that converges to zero. So we will prove this. Suppose that epsilon is greater than zero. 
choose capital N bigger than 1 over epsilon. Then we know that 1 over n is less than epsilon. So if little n is greater than capital N, then the distance between 0 and 1 over n is equal to 1 over n, which is less than 1 over capital N, which is less than epsilon. And this proves convergence. Our other two sequences, the uh, Fibonacci sequence and the sequence 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 3, and so on, both diverge for the same reason that an diverges. That is, if you pick any number, then the closest that any, um, if you pick any number, there are at most two ANs that are close, closer than one to that number. So that means that there are infinitely many that are further away than one from that number, which violates the definition of convergence. Thank you for watching this video. Contact information is on the screen, also in the description down below. I hope that you're enjoying learning calculus, and I hope that you're having a great day.